change who you are. Hey family, we are so excited that you chose to join us this morning. Our weekend worship experience is going to start in just a few minutes. And there are a few things that we wanted to share with you to make today the best possible experience. Hey, we want to let you know that everything you need for today's service can all be found in the description area of our stream down below. We really want to encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii, and make sure your notifications are on. That way, you'll be up to date and notified anytime we start service, anytime we upload our latest sermon, and anytime we upload any new videos. Hey, all of us here at C4 are very excited that you're joining us today. We can't wait to worship with you. Can change who you are. You're always good. So I will pursue you, O oh lover of my soul. You're always Good morning, Ohana. Aloha kakahiaka. Rise up, fam. The presence of the Lord. He's all that we want. Amen. He's so worthy of all praise. Jesus, we've come to love you. We've come to honor you. We've come to worship you, Jesus. Let our praise be your welcome.
worthy king.
we get the privilege of taking communion with each other this morning and as we do that I just want to refer back to John chapter 13 where as they're getting ready to have this um, last supper the Passover meal take communion with Jesus this event happens where Jesus asks who's gonna wash our feet and then they didn't get a person to do it and so what happens is Jesus steps into this place where he says, come to me, I'm gonna, he busts out his towel, his little bowl to wash their feet with. And Peter's like, no, 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 no. Don't wash my feet. It's, it's I who should be washing yours. And Jesus replies that like, if you, if you don't allow me to do this, then you will not know me. You will not be close to me. And there's a space, I just wanna share this with you, that Jesus says this. He says, you call me teacher, and Lord, and you are correct, for so am I. But if I, the Lord and teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I gave you an example so that you also would do this, just as I have done it for you. And so if you see this picture, as Jesus washes us clean, that's his example. He's, his example is then pushing us forward to then be one with each other, to commune with him should lead into communing with one another, that we would wash our relationships clean with Jesus and for Jesus. And so in this place, would you grab your communion elements with me? When he says that this is my body that will be broken for you, it leads into this place of Jesus understanding and relating to our brokenness and so would you break the bread and would you take this with me then he takes the cup and he says this is the cup of the new covenant for my blood my life is being poured out for you and this is an example of victory this is an example of empowerment this is an example of triumph for our lives and so instead of leading living our lives out of offense towards one another out of offense towards God he said I'm pouring out my life that you may come closer that you may be intimate that you may be washed clean that there is power in my blood in my life that overcomes, that is triumphant over every single offense. And so as we take the cup together, that's what we're remembering, is how powerful Jesus' life is, is how triumphal his life is, and how empowering the cup of the new covenant is. So let's take this together. before we pray I'm just gonna ask us to go back into the bridge of this song and as we sing be exalted this is the reason why we sing and exalt the name of Jesus amen come on let's praise him together
for this season that you're calling us into unity as a bride, as one church, not C4, but as the churches of Hawaii, you're calling us together. And it's because of you, Jesus. And so, Lord, we just ask in this season that you help us, that you encourage us, that you give us courage to be able to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, that you've given us, your word says that you've given us every spiritual blessing blessing in the heavenly places. And so, Father, we want to walk as your triumphal children. Father, we want to walk in what you have already set forth with for us in Jesus. And so in this season, God, we just humble ourselves and we give our offenses to you. God, we even give our victories, our success to you because all of it means nothing without you, Jesus. And so we give you all the honor and all the glory, all the praise that you and you alone, Jesus, are worthy. And if you believe that, if you're in agreement, would you say amen with me this morning? Amen. Come on, tell him he's worthy. Woo! Well, family, it's good to be here with you this morning. If you have children that are checked in for kids ministry, would you go ahead and release them to our team over in the back? But if you don't, just go ahead and give somebody a hug. Tell them you're glad to see them this morning. Aloha and welcome to our weekend worship service. All of us at C4 are so excited that you're joining us today. Our purpose is to help you pursue the freedom to be all that God has created you to be. If this is your first time joining us and want to learn more, visit us at our website, c4.church. There you'll find everything from upcoming events, how to give, and opportunities to connect with us. On the home page, you will see a button that says connect with us. Click it, enter your information, and someone from our connect team will reach out. You can also scan this QR code right here and it will take you to our connect form. Now, if you're here in person with us, there is a physical connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. Once you complete it, you can drop it in the tithe bucket the brown box mounted on the wall, or give it to one of our Connect team members wearing a Connect lanyard. You can also get involved and connect beyond our weekend services. There are a lot of opportunities and events happening in and around our church. So go ahead, visit our website, click on the Events tab to see our events calendar. Now lastly, we believe in building a culture that celebrates what God is doing and testifying of his goodness. We truly believe that the testimony of one can impact the many. If you would like to share your story, big or small, email us at testimony at c4.church or talk with one of our pastors. Hey, thanks for joining us today for our worship experience. We look forward to seeing you again. Aloha. Experience a fresh touch of the Lord as you and your family get equipped to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Join revivalists Richard and Libby Gordon on Saturday, April 8th at the Hawaii Convention Center for a time of practical training and equipping in the prophetic and healing gifts of the Spirit. I just get so excited to introduce the people to a living walking God. Designed specifically for leadership and ministry teams, youth, and everyone who wants to learn to make the supernatural natural. I just feel there's this new hunger, not just 
religion, but the person of Jesus. Space is limited, so register for the Glory Conference today at kchawaii.org. How many of you excited for Easter weekend? Oh, come on, I want to see the guys over here. What about on, us on this side? You guys not excited? All right. Hey, man, I'm so glad to uh, join you, uh, be here with you this morning. My name is Kian. and have the privilege of being one of the pastors. I want to welcome you all, all of you joining us online as well. Um, I'm literally, literally the last person that they asked on the list of people to be host this morning. And so if you don't ever see me up here again, you know that I did a very good job. And so, but hey, I'm excited because again, we have like just this amazing weekend that's coming up. Good Friday, it starts off with our friend Richard Gordon and it's a call, again, a call for unity amongst the churches in Hawaii. So there's a whole bunch of churches, even more than are on this list right now. And so I want to encourage you, be there for Good Friday. Be anticip uh, Anticipation needs to resonate in our heart as we gather together as one church at the um, Hawaii Convention Center. Um, how many of you got your tickets for the Glory Conference? Make some noise. Woo! Yeah, I'll say this. We started off with $10, and, and let me just say, it's not a promotion gimmick, okay, guys? I literally, the base cost for this thing is $35. That's for us to, like, not lose any money. And we said, okay, you know what? We're going to give our church a discount. So we took, like, $25 off, and then there's only so much tickets that we could afford at that price. And so now we've sold out, and we've sold over 300 tickets. And so now the current price is $20, and I think we only have maybe 80 spots left at that price, and after that, it's going to be $35. So you want to go and grab your tickets now for that. You can scan the QR code that's up here on the screens in order, in order to register today. But with that being said, we actually have a video from our friend Richard, who's going to be here with us with his wife Libby, and so I want you to check this video out real quick. Hey C4, I can't wait to be with you in April. One of my favorite places, one of my favorite churches. I'm calling in from uh, Celaya, Mexico. We're about to do a crusade tonight. They rented out a big stadium and we are about to see the power of God come in this place. Over 50 churches have gathered in unity to see a move of God in, one, in the most dangerous city in the world, Celaya, Mexico. And we're trusting for a move of God in this cartel run city. And in the same way, on April, I'm coming and it's not a, just an event. It's not just a glory conference. I believe there's going to be a move of unity amongst the churches that will command a blessing on the island. And so I want to invite you not just to be in the room uh, to receive for yourself, but to be in the room to be part of this journey of unity in the island. I, I believe the, it's the rooms you're in that will change the destiny that you walk in. And so I invite you to be part of us. Join with us in the vision to see the glory of God cover the island. It's Hawaii's time. I love you guys and I can't wait to be with you. Can't wait to be with Richard. He's such an amazing dude. His family is amazing. So again, I just want to encourage you to sign up for this Glory Conference. And really the big reason for us is unity, but also there's, there's this thing called the priesthood of believers. And we're wanting to equip our, not just our church, but the people of Hawaii to begin to walk in that space where you are actually taking the supernatural and making it natural in your life and being able to help people experience the love and the glory of God. Amen? And so that's a big thing for us. Hey, and also, it's kind of funny because we talk about Easter and also we have this other day, Sunday, called Easter Sunday. Um, we're just looking at this as a big celebration. And so we want to look at, uh, we want to invite you guys to be with us on Easter Sunday as well. There is a time change. I do want to say that. First service, we first said it was at 
8 a.m. We've moved it back a half an hour, so now it's 8.30 and 10.30 just to match our service times currently. And I do want to share this. For all of you with families, with teens, with young adults, um, we're going to look at our 1030 service, service as a little bit different. The majority of the service is going to be the same, but what we're going to do is switch up the ministry time aspect to really invest into the kids, the keiki, um, you know, all the way from whatever, the Todd's, to young adults, we want we want to be able to invest in their lives and begin to prophesy and bless them. So that's something that's going to be a little bit different for the second service. So it is like more of a family service. We'll still have kids uh, ministry available, but I just want to encourage you if if you're in that vein of people right now in that life stage, I want to encourage you to come to that second service. Okay, and so with that, one more thing. Whew, I know I got a lot this morning. We got our tithes and offerings, so I'm going to ask our ushers to just pass the buckets. And so this is another way that we can give to the Lord to be able to worship him through our finances. There's a lot of different ways that you can give um, online, at mobile app, or um, cash or check. You can also drop it in the bucket or place it in the offering uh, box in the back corner of the room. But with that said, family, one more thing. I want to throw up this slide to be able to um, show you. We're, we're looking at, our family is growing, right? And currently we had two services. I don't know if you were with us before. We used to have six services and that was madness. Um, we're not trying to get back to that place, but we are recognizing that the church is growing and we need to make a little bit more space. So we're looking at um, adding an additional service to um, our Sundays and we're just asking for your input to be able to help make this decision um, with our leadership. And so if you can scan this QR code, if you didn't do it last week, and be able to fill out this survey, Pastor Kamu assures me that it's only going to take 45 seconds. I told him, dude, I, I, my attention span, if I can't answer it within a minute, I'm not going to do this survey. And so he assures me it's going to be 45 seconds in order for you to do this survey. And it's, and it's, um, it's a way for you to input into part of the direction of where our church is going into the future. Okay, we'll give you a five seconds for that. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, awesome. Now we get to get to the exciting part of service. Now, I, that, was a, that was a joke. Because <laughs> every piece of service is supposed to be exciting, okay? Worship, announcements, message, it just being here together is supposed to be exciting for us. Hey, but we have... Um, a family member bringing the word of God to us this morning. And I am so excited because it's going to be super powerful. Let me, can you just look to the person next to you and tell them, get ready. Yeah. Okay, look to the other person and tell them, I'm ready. Yeah. There we go. Hey, she is um, the worship director for Reunion Church who meets here on Sunday evenings. She's also an artist, an amazing songwriter. And I tell you that, like, man, God just gave me a picture for her life. Like, as, as she sings, God is using her voice to shatter the false realities for humanity. And so I'm so excited to be able to listen in to what our friend Rachel Morley has to offer. And so um, I want to be a house of, of honor. So would you please rise to your feet and help us to honor Rachel as she comes up. Good morning, family. Oh, man, I feel so privileged and honored to, to be trusted with a voice in your house this morning. I was, I was telling the team earlier, C4 is the first church on the island I ever went to seven years ago. It was a Saturday night service. I sat right over there. So just C4 has such a special place in my heart, and I just, oh, I love you guys. So just very excited to be with you this morning. But um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about a heart of worship, but before we even start, um, I know we just had some musical worship, but I just want to—I just want to turn our eyes to the Lord before I even start speaking again, and just, uh, just love Him. So Jesus, we thank you for being in the room. Thank you that you are not just a, an idea, you're not just a concept or a feeling, you're not a ticket to heaven. You're a real living. Son of God, walking around the room.
Thank you for walking around the room. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy. Look right at Jesus. I love you, Lord, my beloved. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Be Jesus, that the veil is torn. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are easy to access. You are not far away. Yeah. So Jesus, we give you our eyes. We give you the gift of our attention this morning. The gift of our thoughts and our heart posture. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, would you be blessed today? Would you find a home in us today? That you would come rest. We receive the invitation into what you desire to do this morning. Don't just bless our plans. I want to take part in the dreams of your heart, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Oh. There is just not a limit to how much we get to bless the Lord. So that's just fun. Oh, man. So yes, as, um, as you guys just heard, I am the worship director at Reunion Church. I've lived here for about seven years. I originally came out here um, with YWAM Honolulu. And it was supposed to be a gap semester. And then I just never left. So love it. This is home for me. And um, I'm also leadership at our ministry school, Kingdom Living. If you've heard of that, we have a part-time school and a full-time school. So um, if you are hungry to go deeper in your faith, to, to really learn practicality, we are a teach and do school. And that just means that um, if we're talking about the prophetic, we're also practicing it. If we're talking about healing, then we're praying for healing, things like that. So it's very hands-on, it's the best decision I've ever made besides just following the Lord is to be a part of that environment. So we start up in the fall. Shameless plug. I believe in it. We love the Lord. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, let's dive in. I'm super excited. Like I said, we're going to talk about just the heart of worship. I think it's really easy to just get lost in, in that word. If I were to ask you guys what worship is, we'd probably have as many answers as there are people sitting in this room. Um, but a great place to start, there's something called the principle of first mention. And what that means is that the first time something is mentioned in scripture, we get to go back to that and we translate everything else that follows in the Bible. We translate it through the first time that it's mentioned. And so the first time that worship is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 22. 
Um, we can throw that slide up there. Love it. Yay, tech team. Okay. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out the place God he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to the servants, "Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you." Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he, he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Ooh, so... The context of what's happening here is that God came to who was formerly known as Abraham, Abram, and his wife, who was Sarai at the time, and they're super, super, super old, way past being able to, to bear children. And in this time, having family, having, having sons and daughters was your livelihood. That was survival. That was, that was the way that their society was structured, and God promised them not just a son, God promised them many sons and daughters. God promised them that nations and kings would come through their family line. And they waited for 25 years. So they were already old, they were already past childbearing age, and then 25 years later, God finally fulfilled the promise and gave him Isaac. 25 years after he promised it. And so what God is asking him to do here in this moment is, hey, you remember that thing I promised you 25 years ago? You remember the thing that you want more than anything else in the entire world? Do you remember what literally will, is, is your survival is dictated by? Okay, here it is, and now kill it. Wow. Literally the most precious thing that the Lord has ever given Abraham ever given Abraham. And not only that, God literally changed Abram's name to Abraham, which Abram means father of many, and Abraham means father of nations. So it was literally so important to the Lord that he changed the name of Abraham. He said, I, I promise you this so much that I'm going to change your nature. I'm changing your identity to match promise. So that's how sure it was that God would give him Isaac. And then once he had Isaac, he said, okay, now lay him on the altar. And what does Abram say? He said, okay, let's go worship. That is the first time that worship is mentioned in the Bible. It had nothing to do with a song. It had everything to do with a heart posture of surrender and understanding the lordship of God. And we even, if you go back to even the very first verse, when, it, when God calls out to Abraham, and Abraham's, Abraham says, here I am. That word for here I am is hineni in the Hebrew. I think we have a slide for that. And hineni literally translates to, my answer is yes before you even ask me. So Abraham's heart was postured to worship before God even asked him to do it. Because Abraham had a history, he said, I have seen your faithfulness before, and I will see it again. So no matter what you ask me, my answer is yes. I know your nature, and so I won't question your motives. And, and if I'm not questioning your motives, if I'm rooted in your nature, if I've seen your kindness, your faithfulness, in every moment of my life, then whatever you're about to ask me, I can never question your kindness. I can never question your faithfulness. You changed my name to remind me of your faithfulness as I waited for 25 years. And I'm sure, I'm sure that Abraham was there like, that's the, that's the last thing maybe he thought God would ask for him. And yet that was the most precious thing he could offer the Lord. 
that was worship. Abraham had fear of the Lord. And what that means is that he had right reverence for God, right respect, right honor for God. And I'm sure even as he led his son up to be sacrificed, I'm sure that that might answer yes before you even ask me. I'm sure that sustained him in every step. He knew it was about to happen. Isaac didn't even know. He's just going on a little father-son trip, not even knowing what is happening. A little hike. He has no idea what's waiting for him. But I, I can imagine with every step, Abraham saying, I said yes, and I mean it. I said, whatever you ask me is yes, and I mean it. And this, this is worship. And, and from what we know, there's nothing in scripture, nowhere that we can see that Abraham was begrudging. From everything we know, maybe, we, maybe he was. We don't know his thoughts. But from everything we know, Abraham was gladly obedient. He would gladly give the Lord anything he asked. And so that word for worship is the Hebrew word shakah. And shakah means to literally bow down, fall on your face, humble yourself, and surrender. That is the principle of first mention. This is what worship is. And so everything else that's to follow in the Bible, all of the, the dancing and the music and the, the wild sacrifices when David danced until his clothes fell off, when there was day and night, 24-7 worship for 33 years in the, in the tabernacle, what we do on a daily basis, on a, on a weekly basis together, this all has to be translated through this principle of first mention. It has to be with humility and surrender, first of all, of recognizing the lordship of Jesus, the lordship of God that I would come with right reverence, that even in my dancing, in my singing, it's not just doing the stuff. It's understanding, Jesus, your Lord. This is what you're worthy of, period. No matter what you ask of me. We can only go in friendship with God to the degree that we go in lordship with him is also another way of saying this. We love, we love to hop into like, I am a friend of God. Like that's so fun. And we love to sing those songs and have the feel goods of, yes, he absolutely is my friend, but he's my God first. He has to be Lord first because otherwise I'm going to interpret his Lordship through friendship. And I'll be like, well, a friend would never ask me to sacrifice my son. That's mean. But if I understand his nature, I don't question his motives. And so that's what I am approaching every offering of surrender. I'm not like, God knows how much this means to me. He would never ask me to do this. He's cruel. Ooh, ooh, no, no way. If I were to say, Tifa, oh, Tifa is cruel. Anybody who knows her would be like, that is the craziest thing that's ever come out of anybody's <laughs> mouth on the planet. She's the farthest thing from cruel. And what that would mean is that, oh, you don't know her. And so why is that okay when we talk to the Lord and then we do it in the name of honest worship? And I would, I would, I would be cautious to approach the Lord in that way. And yet he's also my friend. Flip side of the same coin. There's grace for my honesty. There's grace for my second guessing. There's grace for my doubt. The God of the universe has grace for me to point a finger at him and say, this feels cruel. He's like, I know, but it's not. Isn't that crazy? So this, this is a heart posture of worship. It's not a song. We can sing songs that are worshipful, but worship is not a song. Worship is a heart posture. I don't need to be, have like a soundtrack in the back of my day in order for it to be a worshipful day. I don't need a musical pad behind me as I'm going through. Like, that doesn't make it worship. This is worship right now. If you choose it, because we can sit through this whole worship set, the whole musical portion of the service, and maybe, and this is not a shame thing, but honestly, we have to check our hearts. Did I actually worship? Did I revere the Lord? It's not a box to check off. I don't care if you came to church or not. That doesn't mean you worshiped. You can attend every revival service, every worship service. You can know every Mav City song in the world. And you might have never worshiped. 
But you might have never gone to church in your entire life, and yet you revere the Lord, and therefore you know worship better than somebody who could even be a pastor. And that is, that should strike the fear of the Lord in our hearts. And you know what? Nobody, nobody can judge that for you, except for you and the Lord. I don't know your heart. You can look super worshipful. You can be the first one with your hands raised, singing the loudest on every worship team, and not have any idea how to worship. That's just the stuff. So I want to talk. Man, I can, I can just get on a tangent about these things, and I got I to gotta go. OK, I want to talk to you guys about Mary. And so we're going to read through, through Luke 10, just the end of that passage. One slide before that, NIV version. Unless we don't have that, then I'll just read it to you. I'll just read it to you. Okay. This is 38 through 42, Luke 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted, listen, by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And we can look in the, in the Passion Translation, that last verse, I love this, it says, Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted, and I won't take that privilege from her. Ooh. It is really easy to look at this passage and be like, doing stuff is wrong, sitting at the feet of Jesus is right. But Jesus didn't say to Martha, hey, stop doing stuff. He said, oh, I can tell your heart is troubled. It had nothing to do with what she was, what she was doing. It literally says in that passage, she was busy doing things that had to be done. She's not like out mowing the lawn and all these like random things that are like, why are you doing that right now? Like taking her donations to Goodwill finally that have been in her car for three months. Like she's doing things that have to be done. She's probably like making the food. There's a bunch of people in her house. She's getting the extra chairs. She's hosting rightly. She's probably holding the situation with right reverence of like, oh my gosh, the God of the universe in flesh is in my living room. I, we're going to need some water, you know, some food. Like, that's actually a real thing. Like, I don't have enough grain in my house. I should get that, you know? And, and so it's easy to, to point fingers and to judge at, like, this is wrong. But okay, you're going to honestly tell me that if Jesus Christ in flesh was like, I'm going to receive an invitation to your house and I'm bringing all my people, you wouldn't be like a little tiny bit stressed about cleaning your house up a little? I, I would. I'll be honest. That's a big deal. Do you, and like, man, you wonder how many invitations Jesus probably got for like, come to my house, come to my, probably hundreds, if not thousands. Everybody wants to host him. Everybody has a sick family member. They want him to come see. Everybody has a problem that he want, they want him to come solve. And Jesus chose Martha's house. That is like the highest honor available. She passed the first test. Jesus was like, I would love, I would love to be in your home. This is an honor and a privilege. This is noteworthy. This is amazing. And then he comes into her home and she busies herself in another room. And she misses the point of Jesus being in her home in the first place. A lot of us, if we're really honest with ourselves, stop at just being around the presence of God. Just being a Christian, just coming to church. I read my Bible today, did my quiet time, I listened to worship music. I went to Fresh Fire every day this week. 
But proximity with him does not mean you have intimacy with him. You can be near him and completely disconnected from him. I just flew in last night from a trip on the mainland, and I tell you what, I had a lot of proximity with the person next to me on the plane, but I don't have any intimacy with them. I don't know them. I am not a plane talker. I will not. I'm a social girl, but I will, I literally, if people start talking, I just pretend I don't hear them. It's really bad. (laughs) That is what we do to the Lord, though. Are we kidding? Like, that's what we, we're like, oh, I'm here. I got the goosebumps. Check. Jesus Christ was in Martha's home and she was distracted in another room. That is mind blowing. And yet we look at our lives and we do that every day. There's a lot of churches, there's a lot of ministries, there's a lot of people that, that have the presence of God in the house. And that's amazing. That's noteworthy. That's an honor and a privilege. They've stewarded an environment where Jesus longs to come and be. And yet, like, how many people, how many people are making eye contact with him? How many people, not just the concept or the idea of Jesus, not just, yes, the worthiness of Jesus, we're singing to the sky, but are you looking him in the eyes saying, you're worthy? What it, where was he in the room today? You know, you get it. I, I want to talk about that forever, but I got to <laughs> keep it up. Religion is not doing bad stuff. It's actually doing good stuff with the wrong heart or at the wrong time. No, nothing that Martha did was wrong. It was just done with the wrong heart. He said, oh, Martha, your heart is troubled. Not, oh, Martha, don't, don't do that stuff. And on the flip side, Mary, Mary could have been. She just had the right heart sitting at his feet is not a formula. We don't just stop doing stuff and then think, oh, I'm worshiping. She could have been sitting there in anxiety and he would have corrected her heart. We cannot stop at being just satisfied of just just getting Jesus into the building that we're in, just getting saved, just whatever. Oh my gosh, Jesus is not a ticket to heaven. That is selling short the kingdom of God. I love that he saved my soul. I love that I get to spend eternity with him and with you guys. What a gift. But I have access to him now. Death is not my salvation. Death is not my ticket into the presence of God. The torn veil is. He already did that. He already answered our prayers of proximity. And we get to respond with our yes to connection. If we choose it. We can be, okay, part of the, there's, there's, a, there's a beauty and a reward, but also a danger of being a part of a house that values the presence of God, of being a part of a healthy ministry. You guys are an incredibly beautiful, healthy church. I love C4. You can come to Fresh Fire every day, and because there's other people in the room that have invited the Lord, that have, that have with the intention of, I'm going to host him, you can ride off of the anointing and the testimony and, and the, the presence of God being hosted on somebody next to you for your whole life. And you can fool yourself into thinking that you had intimacy with him. And then you leave the room and it's, oh, that church just doesn't host the Lord. Oh, my family is just fighting. Oh, da, 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 da. And we walk into blame. But I'm pretty sure the veil was torn for me. Not just for the church, not just for C4, not just for Tifa Garza. She can host the Lord beautifully, amazingly. One of the best of the best, I'm sure. Not a competition, but if it was, she'd probably win. <laughs> but that's, I can't, I don't want to. I don't want to afford to, to make room for, I, I, oh my gosh, if we had right value, if we shakad the Lord, if we had right fear of the Lord, reverence of the presence of God, 
Why would I settle for my friend hosting the presence of God when I have the privilege of access to him? Oh, I don't want to afford to do that. I cannot afford to do that. My life is a grain of sand in comparison to eternity. I have a blip on the radar to give him. After that, oh, it's eternity in heaven. There is a grain of sand in the amount of time that I get to choose what I give him, the moments I choose to give him or not. I don't want to miss him for a moment. When I, when I see him rightly, the, the worthiness of Jesus dictates the degree that I worship him. If, I, if I'm withholding from him, then I need to go back to understanding his worthiness. If, if there's anything in my life, then I would even second guess giving him. Ooh, I better quicken my reverence. I better realize that he's the one that gave that to me in the first place. If he asked you to quit your job tomorrow, what would your response be? When I know that he's the one who signs my paychecks in the first place, when I know that his name is literally Jehovah Jireh, that's not just some fun title he picked up. That, when he has a name, when we see a name of God, what that means is it's a literally a covenanted nature. That's such a promise to be our provider that he changed his identity to match that. When you get married, women, you change your name. You change your last name. Because your identity changes to be one with your husband. That's a similar concept. Jesus is saying, I promise you this so much that I'm changing my nature to match the promise. That's crazy. If we settle at just doing right things, sure, I would give my job up for the Lord. But is that reverence for the Lord? Is that worship? Or is that risk for the sake of risk? Again, it's all a heart posture thing. It's not about quitting your job. It's not about singing a song. It's not about would you lay on your face in a worship set. It's not about would you raise your hands. It's not about memorizing the right things, writing the right songs, doing whatever. It's just heart posture. We can do a good thing that isn't right for the moment. And even if it, to my worldly eyes, to my earthly wisdom, even if it looks like it's more, let's say, dancing wildly, foolishly for the Lord, we would say, oh, wow, that's extravagant worship. Right? And then there's another person next to them, sitting silently, not singing along, maybe a stoic face. And we can look at that and say, that one's worshiping, that one's not. But if I, if I have intimacy with Jesus, man, he values that so much more than whatever it looks like. Sometimes Jesus will ask us, the Isaac on the altar might be our pride and our dignity. And, and if, if worshiping wildly and dancing around and all, if that's something that feels like I would never do that, then he might be asking you to do that. Not because he's cruel, but because he's kind. He's kind to leave nothing in your life unredeemed. He's kind to not let you stay in pride. He's not this prideful of, you better worship me however you don't want to. I'm going to make this cost you. He's like, oh, actually, like, there's reward. There's reward in giving me something costly. And it's his kindness that he would ask something costly. He's checking our heart posture. But on the other side, some of you, wild ones, maybe less wild ones in the 830 service, I don't know. But some of you, probably, maybe that's easy for you. Maybe you're a dancer. Maybe you're an extrovert. Maybe you're, you just have no fear of man. That's amazing. And so maybe what is costly to you is sitting still. But people are, not, but people are gonna think I don't know how to worship. People are gonna think I don't know the Lord if I just sit here. 
I don't sing along. But maybe he's asking you. Because it's his kindness that he wouldn't let you do stuff without connecting with him. They would miss the point and then get to the end of your life facing the person of Jesus and say, oh, I never knew you. But I did all these things. Luke 7 in the message version, take note of this. Go read it afterward. I won't get into it. I'll go all day if I get into that. But read it. There's a verse in there that says, our God-sponsored projects had everyone talking. We bash the demons in your name. What it's saying, we did all the ministry. We're experts at ministry. I'm Creighton level at ministry. Senior pastor, all the things. And he said, oh, but I never knew you. It is not about doing the right stuff. It is about having the right heart. It's not a formula. There's a great sin of presumption. Just assuming what he wants to do without inquiring. Religion begins with a satisfied heart. It begins with the minute I'm going through the motions. The minute I think I've become an expert at God. At the boundless, infinite creator of the universe, Lord of heaven and earth. Somehow I'm suddenly an expert and I've seen all there is to see. Uh Uh-oh. I don't want to become so familiar with God, with the presence of God, with the person of the Holy Spirit, with the blood of Jesus that I take him for granted. And I can miss him in the, very, in the very environment, in the very life that we've tried to structure towards giving him attention, giving him glory, giving him honor. We can miss him in the middle of that. Worship team, you can come back up. I don't, I don't want this to just be words. I, I honestly could not care less if you remember my name or anything that I say or if you walk out of here and forget the entire service, but we will not miss the Lord today. We will not leave this room without connecting with the person of Jesus. And I, I just want us to take a minute in just this, this response time, this last set. And I want us to really come before the Lord and check our hearts. I can't make you do this. Your, your person next to you can't make you do this. The worship team can't make you do this. This is, this is a choice if you'd like for this. But this is that Psalm 139 mentality of search me and know me, God. Search my heart. Search my mind. Search my words. Search my thoughts. And just ask him, Lord, where has anything grown cold in my heart? Are there places that I have substituted or just stopped at proximity and not gone into intimacy? Are there are there places where my hunger for you has grown cold? Are there places that I'm walking in religion even though I look like I'm really on fire for the Lord? Are there places where I've settled with songs being worshipped instead of my heart being worshipped? Just to just to close, I want us to just think about um, a couple chapters after Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. She found Jesus and broke an alabaster jar of perfume over his feet. And the response in the room was good stuff in the wrong time, in the wrong heart. 
they said. What a waste. This should have been sold and the money used for the poor. Is giving money to the poor bad? Of course not. Some of them probably were speaking out of even protection for Jesus. Oh my gosh, you don't know what this woman's done. Oh God, if he knew what she's done, her sin's going to jump onto him. But in, in acting in good stuff with wrong heart, they accidentally accused God. They actually postured their heart against God. And Jesus' response was, she's preparing me for burial. She was being led by the Holy Spirit, not driven by anxiety. She was being led by the Spirit, discerning what he's doing. She probably didn't even understand what she was doing. She probably had no idea. But she saw the worthiness of Jesus and it dictated her degree of worship. She understood this is the Lord. This is the Messiah that we've been talking about for hundreds of years, for thousands of years. This is the one we've been waiting for. I know it. And so if walking into this room and doing this gets me killed, I don't, I don't care. I, I am compelled by what I've seen of this man. I'm compelled to give the Lord of Lords, the rightful King, the Savior of my life, I'm compelled to give him what he's worthy of. She wasn't going through the motion. This had never been done before. She wasn't trying to look like a worshiper. She wasn't. This had never been talked about before. This was a, this was a brand new thing. She was just compelled. This is my, this is a costliest offering I have. This is the most expensive thing in my house. And I know that you're worthy. And so I'm just trying to give you something that's the most expensive thing. Same heart as Abraham. This is the most cost, this is the most precious thing I have to offer you. Here it is. And not just the perfume, my dignity, my status, possibly her life. And even in that moment, that's when they turned against him. And that's when they started plotting for, for the crucifixion of Jesus. That moment was that costly. That's what started the last days of Jesus' life. And there was no music. Would you stand with me? I just want to pray for us and we're going to go into worship for a minute. Jesus, Jesus, thank you that, that repentance is just changing my mind. It's not weeping and groveling on the ground, and there's not a 27-step process to get back to you. Thank you that you're in the room, and I just turn around. I just change my mind in a moment, in an instant. And so right now, Jesus, we remember we remember the scriptural promise that your kindness is what leads us to repentance. It is your kindness that I turn around. It's your kindness that I change my mind. And so Jesus, I turn around. I choose to change my mind. I turn around against religion, against just doing good stuff. I don't want to just do good stuff. Jesus, have my heart. And I believe there's a grace in the room right now that um, I think the Holy Spirit will stir on some of your hearts as he asks you to commission your own life, to choose the commissioning, to live a life of worship. Not just come to worship services, but that you would become a contributor to the worship of Jesus that you would take part in building him a throne, like it says in Psalms, that the praise of his people, he's enthroned on the praises of his people. Not the songs, he's enthroned on the worship, 
the reverence to God. He's enthroned on us, viewing him rightly. And so Jesus, right now, we commission our hearts and our minds. We commission our lives, our families, our jobs, our commute to work, our grocery shopping, our, our, our taxes. We commission every part of our lives from my waking all the way through my sleeping, even in my dreaming, every moment of my day, I cannot afford to miss the person of Jesus when I have access to him. I can't afford to do this and I don't want to. I don't want to afford room in my life where I am missing you. Thank you for the torn veil. You gave everything to tear the veil. You gave everything to tear the veil. You came as fully God and fully man you died my death. You died my death. You took on every offense. You took on every scar, every lashing. I deserved it. I deserved it. And you took it on freely. And so I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for the kindness of your blood, for the kindness of your scars, for the kindness of the perfect life you lived. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your kindness. I, I remember it and I receive your life. I receive your death and I receive what you've done for us. That you tore the veil. I remember, I remember the torn veil that, that allowed access to the presence of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus died, he said, it is better that I leave. There is a, there's a better portion coming for you. And he was referring to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have to go away because there's a better thing than just God in flesh. Better than Jesus. And so Holy Spirit, we receive you right now that the Holy Spirit would compel us into right worship. Whether you, you know the Holy Spirit your whole life or if this is the first time you're hearing that word, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, would you come? Give us a fresh and filling, Holy Spirit. Give us fresh perspective, Holy Spirit. Give us fresh sight, a fresh thought life, that I would turn to you, that I would turn to you, that I would know the worthiness, that I would recognize, just like Abraham and like Mary, I would recognize the worthiness of Jesus, and that I would rightly position my life in surrender, that everything that is precious to me would be on the altar, that my whole life would be on the altar, that my whole life would be broken before, at the, before the worthy feet of Jesus, that my entire life, every moment, even the things that don't mean a lot to me, would be before the feet of Jesus as worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us to worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
sort of prayer I want to ask you to come forward and allow this team to pray over you I just feel that there's a grace in this room today to just re uh, bring reprioritization in our lives to make Jesus the first thing and so if you're in need of that inside of your life I want to just ask that you come up and receive prayer this morning if you have any kids over on the other side in the kids ministry hey we're a place that values every single generation from the youngest to our most experienced person in life. And we wanna ask that you would go and grab your kids, your children, come up, and we wanna pray for you as a family. Or if you have, if Kupuna in the house this morning, I wanna ask that you come up and receive prayer as well because we wanna bless you this morning. But in that family, I wanna officially release you from service. If you just wanna stay and hang in the presence of the Lord, uh, you can just sit down, you can do whatever you want in this moment, you can chill just hang with us but other than that have a blessed week in Jesus name hey family this concludes our online worship experience if this was your first time with us Go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, C4 Church Hawaii. And make sure your notifications are on so you don't miss a thing. And if we're already family, we are so glad that you could join us today. Hey, we want to encourage you to join us on Sundays here at C4, 8.30 or 10.30 service. And we also want to let you know that we are here for you. 
and would love to pray for you. In fact, can I pray for you now? Father, we thank you so much for each and every person who is joining us today. We pray that you would continue to bless them, that you would continue to guide them, give them all that they need so that they can shine the light of Jesus wherever they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey family, have a blessed week. Take care, we love you guys.